The death of Her Majesty the Queen led to one of the grandest state funerals in history. But there are reports King Charles wants a new-look monarchy and a shorter, smaller, less expensive coronation ceremony next year. So, what might that look like? Royal author and historian Dr Tessa Dunlop says she thinks Charles will adopt a more modern approach to the throne, while the UK director of the Common Sense Society, Emma Webb, thinks that would be a big mistake. Why, Emma? I think what we've seen over the last couple of days is just how moving ritual can be for the British people, how transformative and how, how effective it is in doing what it's, it's serving its purpose, which has brought the country through grief in this seamless transition. And we have to remember how absolutely incredible this is, for this seamless transition between the he heads of state from this great Elizabethan era into this new era, and to do that so seamlessly and so beautifully. And we have to remember that our constitutional monarch is the embodiment of the constitution. We have a living constitution in this country. And so these things are our traditions. They stretch back all the way, you know, a millennium to Alfred the Great. And I think that these, you know, man doesn't live by bread alone. I think these are really important things for the British people to be able to see a full coronation. Mm -hmm. And there, there are also reasons as well, separate from this arguments, I think, against having a slimmed down monarchy, but that's a separate subject. Dr Tessa Dunlop, we do pageantry, ceremony beautifully. Yeah. Why should we do it smaller and more slimmed down? Well, I think it's important to remember that we were celebrating a unique woman's life. It's been quite hard to separate to what extent that was an outpouring of popularity for monarchy mm. and to what extent it was an outpouring of emotion and respect for the late Queen Elizabeth, mm. whose reach tickled us and took us all the way back to the Blitz, to Churchill, to the high noon of Great Britishness. That's the first point. The second point is the idea that we've always done this, therefore we must keep Ooh. doing it. Actually, a ceremonial pageantry pomp in that way for jubilees and funerals, that's a, rarely, a, a fairly recent invention in the last 120 years. We first saw it for Queen Victoria for her golden and diamond jubilee. So I would contest that, therefore, we have to keep doing yeah. the same thing. Emma, um, we are, of course, in the middle of a cost-of-living crisis. And um, although voices were muted during the period of mourning, out of respect, there will be a number of people who think, yes, a new king might think the money spent on the monarchy would be better spent, redistributed amongst people who perhaps really need it. I, I don't doubt that there will be people who will make that argument. And I, I don't... What I'm, my argument is not one for ignoring the cost of living. I think that that's very important. We saw that from the previous mm. segment, how important that is for people's lives. And I, I think it's important to recognise that. But we also have to also recognise that the as we saw over the last couple of days, with a perfect demonstration of the, the way that ritual and tradition so beautifully um, articulates the feelings of the nation and how, how it binds us together. And it binds together different communities all around the country. Um, and nothing else has power quite like that. You, and I think yeah, that yeah. that is extremely important. You, you, I, I know you say it, it articulates the feelings of the nation, or did it lead the feelings of the nation? Did, did, was it... I mean, it is a deliberate... A morning ritual is a deliberately structured event to create an atmosphere and to create... And, and of course, we have the media with virtual blanket coverage. I think there are, there are Republicans in this country, people who don't like the monarchy. I think many of them have respectfully kept quiet over the last 10-day period, and rightfully so, as a, a great woman has passed away. But I think the idea that you, you claim it articulated and millions out yeah. on the street doesn't necessarily mean that this is a homogenous view and everybody thinks that. Well, I think that... Just looking at how many people... So, how many people came out into the street? Yes, I was in the queue myself. There is the queue, there are the people who came out all in, on, you know, all across the country, in Scotland, in London, and also the fact that, not just in the UK, but also the importance of this internationally and in the Commonwealth, 5.1 billion people watch this worldwide. worldwide. That's over 60%, I think, of the world's population. But we might That's get... extraordinary. But, Emma, do you not think there might be an element of pageantry and ceremonial fatigue 
next year. First of all, I think your point's really good that we had performative unity and Republicans and a large number of people, a large minority of people who feel fairly ambivalent about monarchy, either kept quiet because they respected the late Queen who couldn't and because they realised it was a period of mourning. They might not necessarily be so deferential in a year's time. But let's just quickly go back to the last coronation. We had a whole 16 months between the accession to the throne okay. in February of 52 and the coronation in June 53. Several reasons. One is the Queen was young, she was 25, so she could wait. And also Winston Churchill said, we've got to get the bailiffs out of the house. You know, we had to work out how to pay for the coronation. Arguably, our cost of living crisis now is worse than the economic situation we found ourselves in in 52, 53. We were about to finally bump out rationing. So I would suggest mm. that if you want to retain genuine unity, not just the vocal ones in the queue, you need to, I, you need to moderate. And I know that the King Charles is aware of the cost of living crisis because he asked me to write a briefing on it and one that I sent to him. So he's right. certainly aware uh, of what is going on in the country. And actually, you want the future, you know, you're supporting the future of the monarchy. I think that the monarchy, you talk about reflection, and it, it also has to reflect the mood of the country. And I suspect he will be very aware of trying to draw the, the right balance of to how the country will be feeling once we move away from the period of mourning. Emma Webb, thank you very much indeed. Dr Tessa Dunlop, really interesting to talk to you both this morning and really interesting to know that if next year's coronation is smaller, slimmer, um, that will be down to Martin Lewis <laughs> um, <laughs> and his advice to the new king on how It'll to be done trim outdoors, your so budget. There are no energy bills, so it's, it's not me. <laughs>